I'm Graham Flanagan and I am the producer of Business Insider's Boot Camp series. Today I'm counting down the most intense moments of boot camp and I'm going to give you some behind the scenes intel and show you some never before seen footage and a warning that some of the footage that you're about to see may be disturbing. Future Secret Service agents train behind the wheel of high-speed Dodge Chargers. And these future agents learn what's known as protective transportation, which incorporates high-speed turns and heavy braking. And this is what you didn't see in the original episode. I got to ride inside one of the chargers and I used an iPhone to film what it's like from the perspective of somebody inside one of these cars. Lucky for me, I had lunch after we filmed this. Ah, Number five is Chow in the galley at the Coast Guard Training Center in Cape May, New Jersey. What is it? Fast engines! I saw a lot of really intense situations at Cape May. I ah, ah, fast engines! But I never thought that lunch would be one of them. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Get out and go around! Aye, aye, sir. These recruits are physically and mentally exhausted. You'd think that their meal times would be, you know, a time to relax and nourish themselves, but nope. It's inside ah, your ah, Before they can sit down to eat, they're randomly stopped by company commanders and tested on recruit knowledge. Who was Alex Haley? If they can't answer it properly. Sky writing! They have to write down their mistake in their log, which is reviewed later, and they'll probably have to get smoked for it, which we'll get to. What the freak are you? One of the most interesting things to me about Chow at Cape May was that the company commanders themselves, they're also eating during this time, and they don't get a chance to relax. It's a little bit ridiculous. Would you agree? A lot of them spent their meal time yelling at recruits from their tables. Ah! You don't Carry on! So it's just a chaotic situation for everybody. <laughs> At some boot camps, there's a, like a culminating event that everything leads up to. For the Marines, it's known as the Crucible. The event lasts for 54 straight hours. The recruits have minimal sleep and food and they're tested physically, psychologically, tactically. I mean, you could just see in the faces of these recruits the toll that the Crucible had taken on them. Yes, sir. Did they say what? Get your bags up right now. Get your bags up! So at Fort Benning, these Army armor recruits, they don't exactly get a warm welcome on day one of training. Right there, look at that, right there! Ah, get my wife! Instead, they endure what's known as the shark attack. This way! Let's go! It's about 30 minutes of just non-stop what the Army calls stress inoculation. Stop looking around! Go back to where you were! Just trying to put these recruits in a chaotic environment. What was most interesting for me observing it was the difference between how some recruits responded to the shark attack. Some recruits were very calm. Some were very discombobulated, uh, obviously being impacted by the stress. What is that so difficult? And after about a half hour, the stress level starts to wane, but this is definitely the most intense welcome that I've seen at any boot camp. So back to Cape May and the Coast Guard. These recruits getting smoked, as they say, remains one of the most intense things I've seen during this entire boot camp series. Get your canteens above your skulls. Fingers in her lace, cap facing the overhead. You people have absolutely no self-discipline. Absolutely no self-discipline. So you're just gonna remind yourself, we have no self-discipline. Go! We have no self-discipline! We have no self-discipline! This group of recruits was being punished because earlier in the day when I was filming them in their seamanship class, one of their fellow recruits gestured towards my camera. Do people want to act like actual crazy people all day at seamanship? I got a tool for that. Basically, this was the reason that they were getting punished, which I felt bad about. 
But then I found out later that the company commanders would have found something else to punish them for. It's just sort of part of the daily routine at Cape May. You're always going to get smoked. You'd think that a water bottle holding that above your head would not be a big deal, but as you see in the footage, it just continues to take its toll on the recruits. Hey, Lindsay, you taking a nice little break now that I turned my back? The company commander would blow the whistle. Taking a nice little break, Yelton! And she would point out that somebody had taken a rest or made a mistake or was doing something wrong, and then she would start over. Start over! After about 20 minutes, she finally let them stop. Drop the canteens. And what you didn't see in the original episode was that after this, there was some other kind of, of smoke session that they had to endure. So with the water bottle session, they were just getting started. at Border Patrol Boot Camp in Artesia, New Mexico. All trainees have to go through what's known as OC exposure, which simply means they get sprayed in the face with oleoresin capsicum, which is also known as pepper spray. One, two, three. No gas mask at all, just close range pepper spray to the face. The chemical agent is commonly used in U.S. military and law enforcement in situations with large crowds like protests or to subdue someone using less lethal weapons. This training footage was filmed in April of 2019, but the ongoing use of these chemical agents like pepper spray and tear gas on peaceful protests have sparked a debate around the legality of these methods. We reached out to U.S. Customs and Border Protection to ask if the Academy will continue to conduct OC exposure training and if it has any plans to change the training amid the recent protests surrounding police misconduct. According to a CBP spokesperson, specialists evaluate trainings quarterly, but as of now, the curriculum remains unchanged. When I was filming at the Academy, up close you could see how painful this was for the trainees. Some of them had a, a less intense reaction to it, but for most of them, you could tell it was just pure pain. Get out of the ground! Do it now! Then they have to run into this area where an assailant is waiting for them, and they have to take down this assailant and then make an arrest. Uh, back up. And then finally, they're allowed to run over to this station with water fountains where they can wash their face with water and soap, but it doesn't wash off right away. Um, the water and soap often aren't enough. They had these giant fans going and you could see them just pulling their eyes open just to try and get any kind of relief from the breeze of the fans. Just to give you an idea of how long the OC lasts, that night after filming, I was in town in Artesia picking up dinner and I, this guy walks up to me and says, excuse me, sir, are you the guy with the camera that was out there earlier? And I recognized it was one of the guys that I'd filmed. It was this trainee. Look over here. Over here. You have to open your eyes in order to see how many awnings are over there. Ah, three. So I chatted with him for a minute. His eyes were still red. He still couldn't see. That was like six hours after I had filmed this. So the pain lingers. What? Ah! So that's my countdown of what I think are the most intense moments of the boot camp series so far. Once these agencies and branches deem it safe to film again, I will be back out there making new episodes. If you've been through these training programs, leave a comment. Let me know what you think are the most intense aspects of training. And be sure to subscribe below so that you can find out when new episodes are posted.